Hey everybody, if you don't know me, my name's Jordy Johnson from Carving Fusion. I do Dremel carving, I also do chainsaw carving. In this video today, it's going to be a super long video. I go through step by step what tools I use, safety precautions, and what chainsaws I use, and how I carve this wood spirit with the heart on it. Okay, so here's the log that's uncarved. It's a fresh piece of driftwood. I've already cleaned up the outside. Uh, when you do get driftwood from the beach, there's lots of sand in it, so you'll have to sharpen your chainsaws a lot more. Unless you take off all this skin, make it nice and clean, so then I can do the nice carving here. So, in this video, we're going to talk about that this is for the very beginners. It's going to be a real-time carving. I'm not going to do any editing on it. Maybe I might stop here and there, but I'm not going to adjust any volumes. You're going to hear the full sound of the chainsaw through this DJI mic. It does not have sound reduction. I'll stop, I'll talk, but most of it will be carving, okay? So, I think this piece is almost four feet tall. It's two inches short from four feet tall. It's six inches wide, like the width from here to here. And what is it? It's just over one foot wide this way. Okay, like I said, this is a piece of western red cedar, first growth that I found on the beach. This is a piece of the tree. It's maybe a quarter of the tree. It's not the whole round log. I'll show you guys a top view after. Um, I like to use these pieces to carve wood spirits because it has less chance of cracking. If you have a full log, you know, when wood dries, it shrinks, okay? When it shrinks, it wants to crack. Well, it needs room. It needs room to shrink, so that's when it cracks. But when this one, this is pretty dry, but once it, when this one shrinks, it's got lots of room and it, to shrink, and it doesn't, it doesn't really compress like a full log. I'll show you guys a picture so you understand more what I mean. This doesn't have the center of the heart of the wood in it. It's gone. So anytime you carve a piece without the heart of the wood in it, the center ring, less chance of cracking, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys overhead what I mean, and then I'm gonna show you a couple pictures that I got drawn out here. Okay, so pretend this is your full log, right? So when this shrinks, it needs to crack somewhere just like that, That's this is an overhead view, right? But if you, if you cut this log in half, and you get rid of this center ring, and just use this part, this half of the log with this no center ring, it has less chance of cracking. Okay? So this would be like the log that the log that I'm carving today. There's just it's just lines like they kind of go like this. There's no center part, so it can compress. Does that make sense to you? Now I'm gonna quickly show you overhead of the log. There's no center ring in here, okay? This is first growth. And what I mean by first growth, it's got the rings. The growth rings are a lot tighter all right and it hasn't been planted by man it's a natural growing tree and it holds better detail in my opinion and in this video everything's my opinion okay so let's talk about um, safety gear these are chainsaw car these are chainsaw pants they're called chaps right they're not they don't go all the way around your legs they just go on the front so you know I haven't been wearing my you can get chaps or you can get full pants. The pants are expensive. I do have two pairs. I haven't been wearing them lately because it's called lazy. And when you're being lazy when it comes to safety, that's the day that you're gonna get hurt. So I'm gonna start wearing my chaps every day again. Another thing that's important is eye protection. I just use my glasses as eye protection. Um, Earplugs is important. You know, you can wear gloves. I don't like wearing gloves though because when I have gloves on I don't have a good grip of the chainsaw. I, I'm a better like skin on the chainsaw so I can grip it good and I, I have good control of it. That's why I don't wear gloves. Steel toe shoes. Sometimes you might be carving, you might just say, okay, well, you might be looking at your piece, might put your saw down, the tip of your bar hits your toe. I know it's happened to a few carvers that I know, so steel toe shoes is important. So that's the safety gear talk. Now let's move on to the chainsaw that I'm going to use and then the carving tools. Okay, it might be hard to see on the bench with all the cluster. This is a steel MS-170 gas saw, okay? This is the cheapest steel saw there is. We call them throwaway saws because they're so cheap when it wrecks you just buy a new one. You can get these on sale a couple times a year. So what I suggest for the very beginner is go to your steel dealer, okay? Order, uh, buy the 170. 
steel makes a carving bar. This is not a steel bar, this is a cannon bar, but I don't want to confuse you. Steel makes a carving bar. It's 12 inch and it's a dime tip. See, this one's a quarter tip. Steel makes dime tips. Or maybe that might be a dime tip. But you need to order the new sprocket. You need to, because steel, this, don't hold me to it. The 170s come with a 3.8 sprocket, but you need to order a quarter pitch sprocket when you buy the saw for the carving bar because the carving bar is quarter pitch so quarter pitch bar you need a quarter pitch sprocket 50 gauge so don't pay attention to the bars that i'm using just pretend i'm in this video we just pretend that i'm using a steel carving bar with this 170 okay this is the 170 and you'll see me pull out an, a smaller saw but like i said you can do this whole carving with the steel 170 and with the steel carving bar. I might have one here quickly to show you. Would you look at that? I got one brand new in the box. Okay, so here's your steel carving bar. Lots of pro carvers will say these bars aren't very good and they split or they just screw up fast. Well, I'm not a pro carver. I'm hard on tools and I've been carving, chainsaw carving for four years now or five years. I've broken one of these. So these, I think these bars are uh, great bars. And the fellow, he's actually a real pro carver, Steven Kenzora, he, he just says it's simple. It's the easiest thing to do to get set up for carving. Go to your steel dealer. They might not have these in stock and they might say there's a back order, but if you don't back order, you're never gonna get it. And it usually arrives sooner than, than they say. So if they don't have them, order it and order yourself the quarter pitch sprocket. 50 gauge, okay? Because these bars come in two different sizes of chain. They come in the same length, they look identical, but they come in two different sizes. There's the quarter pitch 50 gauge, or there's a quarter pitch 043 gauge. I think for a beginning carver, you want to get the 50 gauge. Unless you're running a battery saw, you might want to get the 043 gauge. The 043 gauge chain is thinner, okay? So that's that. Now let's move on to the carving tools. Okay, I'm going to simplify this the best I can. Here's your Makita die grinder, okay? These die grinders ho hold the quarter inch bits. The Dremels hold the one eighth bits. So these die grinders are like the Fordhams. They hold the bigger bits. This is your standard Makita die grinder, okay? I suggest this one for the very beginner. It's the most affordable one. Or you can go get yourself a die grinder from Harbor Freight or your local store that sells uh, the cheaper tools. So this is the, the normal speed one. Then you get this one. This is the Makita This with the silver handle. And this one just rips, okay? And you can see there, there's a quarter pitch Cutsall Extreme Flame Burr there. If you wanna get these Cutsall burrs, you just go to the link below in the description. It will take you to the Cutsall site, okay? So this is the faster one, but if you're gonna buy, I think this one's the 800C. See there. Yep, so GD0880C, because if you're gonna buy this one, be careful because there's one with the silver handle that, that has more torque, but it cuts a lot slower. I think this one spins up to um, 28,000 RPMs. This, once you get more experienced and you got a good grip on the tools, I, I suggest you get this one, because this one really super rips. And uh, one of my subscribers bought this for me, Mr. David Grass, thanks again, David. So a Dremel 4300, you don't have to have the Dremel 4300. Any kind of Dremel will work, a knockoff Dremel will work. I use them all the time. Here's a cut saw bit on here too. This is the smaller Extreme Flame Burr. This is my go-to burr right here. We might switch up the burrs. If I do, I'll show you later, okay? So that's that. So then here's a propane wood burner. You can get any kind of tip you want. Myself, I like the Turbo Torch. I think they got the most heat. Okay, but you can get any kind of torch head you want and you just need a torch. This is a homemade sander, okay? These are from belt sanders, it's emery cloth back, right? So all you do is you get a locking nut up here with a washer and the same on the bottom, I double up on the bottom, okay? So it doesn't come undone. Actually, I even epoxy these into place. These are belt sanders that you buy at your hardware store. You uh, cut them up. You just put them on here, you put this in your drill, I don't have my drill out right now, you put this in your drill, spin it, and it will sand the high points, okay? There's one more tool, 
Now, like I said, I'm trying to keep it to the basics, but that's all you need to, that chainsaw and this, these tools is all you need to do to carve a wood spirit for this video. You can get yourself a Makita finger sander or they got cheap wen finger sanders. All right, so uh, I don't use this that often. This is not a cheap tool, but I don't use it that often because, well, I just don't. I don't, I don't have enough patience. But uh, pro carvers like Ryan Cook swears by this tool. You know, you can do eyebrows and stuff like this, clean up the nose, clean around the face. I should start using this tool more, but don't think that you need to buy one of these when you first start carving. You do not need to buy it. It's for more, I think, um, once you get more serious and you want to start borrowing more tools, if you do enjoy the chainsaw carving, okay? I think I got that covered. Oh, also, you might want to get one of these. This is a nylon wheel. You get these on Amazon. Okay, so, you know, after you wood burn or you got lots of chips on your piece of wood, you can uh, wood burn it, then use this nylon wheel too, if you can't uh, make one of those flapping sanders. Oh, also, sorry, I got to slow down here. I'm trying to go as slow as I possibly can. This is a ready rod. So you just go to the hardware store, buy yourself a ready rod, make sure you got the, the right nuts and bolts, okay? Also, with this, I got a, you can get a PVC pipe to put it over here, so when this spins, you don't burn your hand with this ready rod, it just floats inside the PVC pipe. I don't have mine here right now. So I think our next step is to draw the forehead of the wood spirit on, and that's what we're going to cut in first. Okay, you can see the top of the log just here. There's so many different ways to do wood spirits. Every carver kind of has their own way. And I do it a bunch of different ways as well too. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to carve the forehead in first and slope it back. So, you know, you got to think how wide do you want your face on the piece. I might try and make this one wider because if you make it wider from the beginning, it's less beard hairs that you have to do down the sides. But like I said, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. Always, even pro carvers, center lines, okay? This wood spirit down here is gonna have a heart lower um, because Robin on Salt Spring Island might wanna buy it. But if she doesn't buy it, that's fine. Lots of ladies love hearts and they'll buy this wood spirit with a heart. But I'm not carving this to try and make money. I'm carving it because I enjoy it. And that's what it's about, just enjoying it and having a good time. And don't stress out because the more that you do, I'm not a natural born artist. I, can't, I can draw a stick man, but not a running stick man. So, don't stress out. The more that you do, the better you're going to get. And when you're chainsaw carving, always think safety first. Because you guys all know, a chainsaw will, I hate to say it, it will cut your hand off. So, the forehead is going to go right here. I can maybe make it a bit lower to give him some hair up here. Or I'll decide that later if I want to give him hair. So there's my forehead. So what you're gonna see me doing in the real time carving is I'm gonna cut this in about that deep, okay? Straight in, true to the line. Then I'm gonna, after I got that cut straight in, then I'm gonna get my bar and I'm gonna go like this on a bevel and I'm gonna chip that out, okay? So then it's, it's, it's sloped like that. This is, you don't have to have your nose sticking farthest off the piece. I do though, if you look at a human face, the nose sticks farthest off the face. But I'm not trying to carve a human face. I'm trying to carve a wood spirit. Wood spirits don't have to look like real wizards. So I'm going to cut that. I'm going to block it out with my chainsaw. And then I'm going to cut it deeper. And then I'm going to slope it all the... So where would my nose be? So there would be my eye line. My nose would be right here. I'm going to slope it all the way down to the nose. To the tip of the nose, okay? So then that way, once I cut below the must, below the nose and remove some of this wood, your nose will stick farthest off the piece. I'm not going to speed anything up. This is going to be a long video. If you don't want to watch it, you do not have to watch it. It's just something that I've kind of wanted to do for a while. Um, some of this, I made a post on YouTube. Some of the subscribers suggested that I do do it. And thank you that offered that, that said I should do it. Okay. So there's no sense drawing your eyes and nose on now because you're gonna, I just did it for the video, because you're gonna cut all this out and remove lots of this wood. 
And what was the other point? Oh, another thing too, with the foreheads with wood spirits, I like to start with a smaller forehead than a bigger forehead. If your forehead's too big, it will look like a mongoloid. If your forehead's too small, it will look like a wood spirit. And you can always, if you start off with a smaller forehead, like it will be right here, you can always make it bigger, but you can do it. It's a lot harder to make a bigger, bigger forehead smaller. So I'm gonna fire up the saw and get cutting. One more thing I wanna say before I start cutting the, to people that's never chainsaw carved before. I've had some comments from people that probably haven't chainsaw carved and haven't used a carving bar that said, Jordy, tighten your chain. I don't want it to fall off and you to cut yourself. Well, these chainsaw carving bars, you have to leave your chain loose because on the end here, there's no sprocket that spins. This is just heated metal, right? So you have to leave your chain loose because if it's too tight, you're gonna melt your tip or you're gonna blow it out. So for any of you that uh, don't know much about chainsaw carving, you have to leave these chains loose. stop here right now for a second did you guys see where it kicked back and did that little niche that's because I was using the top of my bar when you're using these bars and you're a very beginner always use this where's a pen uh, let's see here like I said I'm not going to be editing much of this always try and use this part of the bar right down in this bottom corner you're not going to get kicked back well you might but just Try not to use this top, the opposite side, the top, because that way you'll get kicked back. And that's what happened there. And this thing can kick back and slice your face off. And I'm sorry, it's true. Another thing too, when I'm carving, am I on the screen? When I'm carving, so say I don't carve with this, the blade right in front of my face, because if it kicks back, it's gonna hit you in the face. I always tilt my head off to the side. So if it kicks back, it's, it's gonna pass your face. You Sometimes you'll see me go like this, look quickly, and then go back, because I don't want it to kick back and go past, because it happens. Sometimes you get careless and it happens, okay? So you can see here, the forehead slope back. It's not gonna be sloped back that much. So now where do you wanna put your eyes on? So once again, your center line, Draw your center line on. Let me see here. I'm going to try. I got to be kind of square when I'm drawing this on. So your center line. How big do you want your forehead? Like I said, a smaller. This is nice cedar. Okay, how big do you want your eyes? And this is going to be a pretty simplistic wood spirit. So your eyes will be here. Your nose. Don't draw, don't draw your nose on like this. Like the bridge of the nose because your bridge of the nose is gonna to be too thin. I suggest you kind of just leave it nice and wide there. I was talking about uh, this with Jess Carr, Rob and uh, Kevin at Sticks and Stones yesterday about, is there a way to know how long, how to make the nose long enough or short enough? Is there a theory? Because the eyes, or let's see here, one, two, they're, they're in fifths. So you got two here, 
one here and two here. But is there a thing for the nose to make how long? Who knows, I just carve it. So you're better off starting with a nice wide bridge of the nose because you can always make it thinner, but it's hard to make it wider, okay? So down here, this is just kind of something that I do. I'm gonna try and um, make this nose a little bit longer this time. Okay, so I just do this cut and that cut. I make sure they're the same length, right? And the same diagonal, but when you're chainsaw carving, sometimes it's hard to make it perfect. Chainsaw carving's the same as Dremel, but it's a lot different because Dremel carving, you're slowly working the Dremel, removing the wood, and you can see what's going on. Chainsaw carving, for example, I'm gonna do one cut here, straight in, then I'm gonna do, then I'm gonna pretend this is my bar, then I'm gonna go under and go here, and then this whole piece is gonna chip out like a little wedge, like a little triangle. Same with beside the nose. I'm gonna go like this, and then I'm gonna do a straight cut in the nose, maybe tilt it a bit this way so the nose is sloped out. Then I'm gonna come in with my bar, like this, right? And this whole piece is gonna chip out. So your mustache, what kind of mustache do you wanna have? Is this on camera? You don't really need to draw the mustache on yet, so let's not draw it on yet. So like I said, you're gonna see me chip this out, the, cut it straight across, straight, then go under, chip that out, cut here, here, chip that out, and cut under the nose, and you'll see me do an up cut. And that's how you get the nose to stick farther off the face. There's so many different things that you can do. So now, you can draw your mustache on. Your nose doesn't stick off that far and your eyebrows are probably the same height. You can, car you can carve these eyebrows down. When I say carve deeper, that means carve deeper, push it back, carve it so it starts going back towards the, the back of the wood. Okay, like I said, I'm not gonna focus too much on making the nose stick farthest off the piece. But now, so what we can do is we can draw our mustache on. You know, you can draw your mustache on any way you want. You can make it so it blows over if it's windy. You can make it so it's just a thin little mustache like this. You know, you can give them a bottom lip. You can give them an open mouth. But this one, we're going to kind of, what I do here is just kind of go like this. We're going to make this guy kind of like, you know, go like this, then go off to the sides. Okay, then his mouth, gotta think where his, this guy's just gonna have a bottom lip. We don't even need to put his mouth on yet. Let's do that after so we do one step at a time. So once again, I'm gonna carve on the, it's true to the line, that means try and keep your bar, true to the line like Ryan Cook says, try and keep your bars straight. You guys, Ryan Cook's a pro carver, he's got a YouTube channel, uh, Ryan Cook Carving. There's Uncle Kevin, he's got a YouTube channel about chainsaw carving. So I'm gonna cut, go true to the line, then I'm gonna block it out again, you're gonna see a chip fall out. So, I know, and, and yes, I repeat myself. I don't care what you guys say, that say, oh, you repeat yourself too much. That's how I learn. And if I learn that way, and some people might think the way I think, that's how they're gonna learn too. If you don't like it, see you later.
okay so cut there then chip that out that's how you're going to get your mustache raised off from the face i think i am going to pull out my little eight inch carving bar because i can the the smaller carving bar you can control it better because you're tighter to the piece you know um but like i said you can use a steel bar it's only 12 inches long it's got an extra four inches on this little eight inch bar and you have lots of control with that bar too back a little bit. I normally wouldn't need to draw this on but this like I said this is a if this video is two hours long it's two hours long okay so I just go across then down across I go get bit past the nostril so come here and down just like a normal mustache right you like you see where it comes down the nostrils here my noses are always too big but if you look here it comes down by the lips and it's past the nostrils it's just you know Get, have a picture of a real face if you're going for realism some of my stuff I, I go by realism but to try and make I think for me most times what I'm trying to do a real nice wood spirit I don't know if this is going to turn out nice is try and make both sides of the face equal and we can do that with our grinder because when you got the chainsaw you know the more experience you get with a chainsaw this is this filming first of all yeah it is when you got the chainsaw it's easy to do a bad cut but when you do got the die grinder in your hand or a fordham you just slowly remove the wood and you can slowly take it to where you want to take it okay so we're going to cut this in right we're going to cut about that deep and we're going to do a chip cut again so true to the line then so pretend it's my bar straight in then chip it out Might as well just keep on rolling.
here, we're gonna we're gonna take this carving deeper and give it more dimension. And here's a show note to uh, Kevin on Salt Spring Island. Okay, so we'll remove some of this wood too to make the mustache come off. I'm gonna take the mustache down closer to the face too. This is all going to get moved around as I keep carving it deeper, but there's your basic shape of a wood spirit, you know? So, you know, you got your bottom lip here, okay? Don't have your bottom lip too big. It's okay if you don't even see your bottom lip. Or you can make it like slope down like that, so it's kind of like, you know, anything you want to do. Okay, so now this part of the carving, I step back, I'm going to step, put this, everything square. I step back and I look to see how proportionate it is. Let me look for a second. Let me see if I see anything that's off. You see how I just drew that bottom lip in? It just kind of looks like there's a bottom lip there. So the nose is a bit tilted that way. No big deal. It's a wood spirit. Don't stress the small stuff, everybody. Okay. So that's that. The mustache looks okay. Um, now, just like Dremel carving, the deepest cut I make on a wood spirit is right in here. Because your nostril will come around like this. So right in there, where the nostril will come down, that's the deepest cut from here to here will be deep in there and that's how you get the real that's when you can push your mustache back towards the face because on a real face if you look i'm a bad example but if you look the mustache the cheeks are higher than the mustache see so then you do this cut then you can cut underneath the nose again then you recut the mustache in farther down towards back push it in push it back okay so also the bottom lip you want to have the bottom lip flush with flush with the face you can have the bottom some carvers do it i do it too you carve it back too deep or you leave it out too far but the bottom lip needs to be pushed back too so it's aligned with the face but it doesn't matter that's not a key thing i think the most key thing is trying to make sure both sides of the face are the same right so you see i left wood on the other side on each side too so our mustache can roll off here so let's um what am i going to cut i'm going to do this deep cut here now on both sides okay and i'm going to cut under the mustache and then i'm going to remove the mustache i'm probably going to have to cut in here deeper and remove some of this again it's all a process just keep on you don't have to carve it deep right away you know like I, I know how to carve it deep right away and just blast i could blast this off in 20 minutes if i wanted to but that's not what this is about one thing definitely you don't want to do you don't want to cut your desk when you're chainsaw carving nope you don't want to do i don't know who did that i didn't do that thanks for the coffee robin you know looking at this piece right now and it looks like he's got a huge bottom lip but we're gonna cut really deep in here and it, it helps to give it a nice round effect we're going to cut really deep in here later 
and then it will make his lip kind of round because you know our lips are rounded too the whole face is basically rounded so and this wood spirit's the hardest to do because i basically started it on a flat surface you're better starting a wood spirit on a surface like this like if this log was like that because then it's already rounded you just got to get rid of that square cut but anyways i can keep talking and talking and talking okay let's get this saw fired up come on Like I said, you have to carve it in. Okay, so now we've got to take this mustache back lower to the face too. Okay, so now we've got to recut the mustache. that's a little bit off it's okay so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a little thin slice in there for the lip so see the bottom lip in there now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut deep in here and it will give you a real nice effect when you're doing the wood burning after okay the bottom lip you need your bottom lip to stick higher than when your beard comes off your face right so i'm just going to use the bottom of my bar like i showed you guys and slowly remove the wood under there like a dremel i gotta set this up so it's square so you guys can see at the same time So I'm going to try and give this guy real like uh, the, the look of eyes, I might not give him pupils. So you see that's all in there now, let's give you a side view. The nose sticks far off, far off now, see how the, there's our just carved rob side view. Alright, so don't forget you got to split your eyebrows and you know your eyebrows is a good way where you, like you, where you can decide if your nose is off to one side so our eyebrows will go like this so we'll split it right here with our chainsaw we'll get rid of that wood an eyebrow here 
than our eyebrow hair. So I split it with my saw. You'll see I'll just kind of do that. Then I'll do a cut here and a cut here. And then I'll do what I did down here with my bar and slowly remove this wood. I might move the saw around any which way you can get the saw in there to remove it. It will help. The more that you can do with your chainsaw, the fast, the less you have to do with your die grinder. And the more experience you get with your chainsaws, the more you'll want to do with your chainsaw because it's faster than the die grinder. Does that make sense to you? So cut, get, remove all this. Do a cut here, cut here, and remove this wood up here. look at the sides of the face I look at the eyebrows see if they're both equal I can see that uh, that's kind of up a bit higher the mustache it doesn't matter you can clean it up later with your die grinder so there's your eye sockets in so now what I gotta think what do I want to do um, I think I'm gonna um, well I don't know what I'm gonna do <laughs> I know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna push this forehead back a bit because I can see it's coming out and I'm showing you guys every single step of the carving I'm doing. Okay, 
So you see how those cheekbones helped? And I can do more when I dump my, got my die grinder. Both the sides of the face are pretty equal. There's, you know, when you look at the real eye, there's not much room beside the eye. Where, you know, right there, there's not like a big chunk of skin over here. So, now, I think I'm gonna pull out my die grinder. Normally, right now, what I would do is cut the beard hairs in and the mustache hairs, but I still gotta draw hard on here and I gotta cut that out. I'm not gonna show that, but I'll show you guys at the video. Um, you know, you can do your, so your beard. How do you want your beard to come off? So you all this extra wood here, so your beard, you know, it's good to have a picture of something. So I'm just gonna kinda go like this and go like this, mark it in there and try and make them the same height, doesn't matter really. So I'll get all this and I'll cut this down. Let's do that right now. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna talk, I'm just gonna show you guys what I'm up to. And um, I don't even know if this guy's gonna have real hair, it doesn't matter really. So let me do the beard hairs, just this coming off the face. Okay, so I think at this point, like I said, I would normally cut the beard hairs and the mustache hairs in now, and if I was gonna do hair hairs, but I think at this point, I'm gonna get my die grinder out, round out inside here a bit more. You know, if you push your eyes uh, too far back, you can always take these uh, eyebrows down and recarve them, right? So I'm gonna round out in here. I'm gonna do a deep cut here again, smooth all that out. I'm gonna come around, give them this car Rob was giving me poop the other day that I need to make my nostril um, flare lines a bit higher. So that's, you know, just everything you can repoo. I'm going to shape the nostrils. I'm going to carve in here deeper and here. Round out here so it looks more like a lip. Um, just round everything off. Clean it all up, right? Shape the cheekbones in a bit more. Um, and yeah, carry on and have a good time. So this is not going to be talking and I'll just... Um, do the thing thing. Here's the dog. I'm gonna use a quick one again with the cut saw burr. Oh, another thing I talked about, I didn't talk about is your dust mask. So this is the dust mask that I use. Um, this was about $500, 450 bucks when I bought it, but the price went up. This is, um, it's called a Trend Air Pro. And it's in my Amazon store. If you guys buy from my Amazon store, I make a few cents. And uh, thank you very much for everybody that does it, and especially Evil Rick. So this is a trend dust mask. I like this because sometimes you guys see I have the bullshit patchy beard or even this little goatee thing. You know, like the other dust mask. Hold on a second, I'll grab one. For to for these dust masks to properly probably properly work, these ones it's like an M3 or a cheaper one. For these ones to properly work, you're supposed to have a clean shaved face with no facial hair. You can have a mustache, but that's it. So it can, so this part can really suck towards your face. So I use these once in a while, but dust does get in. This one, dust really doesn't get in. It does a little, you got, you got filters in here, okay? So what this does, it's rechargeable. It's a battery pack. The battery lasts eight hours. It's got an on-off switch right here. It's got a plug-in right here. You just plug it into the charger that they send you and you charge it up overnight. 
Okay, so this has filters in here, all right? Let me show you. Let me get this thing off. Okay, so there's your filters. So this helps from really things fogging up. This doesn't fog up because, you know, if you get the, the face shields that don't have the motor in them, they fog up. It's, it's almost impossible not to get them to fog. But this sucks air in and pushes air into the mask through these filters. And you can buy spare filters. I just kind of clean my filters and blow them off, but I'm gonna have to buy some new filters sometime soon. So it's like a hard hat. You got the adjuster on it. You can tighten it up right here. You know, you can put it on your head. You can lift it up like a welder cap and just have your puff of your cigarette or whatever you want to do. So this is not a cheap part of the carving, but you know, if you can afford it, like I told myself, if I got to buy one of these a year, it's going to save years of your life from getting all that dust in your lungs. I'm not saying you gotta buy it on my Amazon store. You can buy it anywhere you want. I know they sell them at KMS Tools here in Canada, but I just think it's such a good investment. And um, safety, again, I'll say it again, safety is the number one thing, right? So, oh, if you buy it on Amazon, it doesn't come with the carving fusion stickers. So I'm gonna get the die grinder and I'll just show you guys real time carving. I'll move the camera around and I'll start rounding the face off better and try and make everything more equal. You know, another thing I want to say about chainsaw carving or any type of carving or art is it's good to make yourself comfortable. You know, if you're comfortable, then your piece is going to tur turn out better. So I might sit on this chair and kind of shape it if I can. Being comfortable is a very important thing too. Okay, so here's the, du here's the dust mask on. See what I mean? You can leave it up like a welding helmet, then you can put it down, turn your fan on fans on, then you start carving away. See how I did that cut there again? And I'm pushing the mustache back.
Okay, so I'm gonna give this guy a bumpy nose. So hey, I have a bump here. So I'm gonna do a cut straight across here and round it off. It's just, take your time shaping the nose. This is definitely when you shouldn't try to be fast. Okay, you can see here how far the mustache sticks off. It sticks off the face here. So I'm gonna carve this mustache a bit flatter to the face. It's good right here. I'll clean that up a bit more, but uh, carve it lower, carve it deeper. Carve deeper. Okay, so I gotta square this camera up for you guys so you can see it. the key thing that I always look at when doing the nose. So now you can see it's coming to life. So now doing the nose, um, this might be a helpful tip. I always look right here, okay? So I can see that this one's up higher. So all I do is just carve deeper and make this side make I gotta raise this side up to match this side you see that and then you're gonna see me get my die grinder and you're gonna see me pretend this is my die grinder bit right here you're gonna see me go like this up cut the nostrils in there and then you're gonna see me round them off
Okay, so I think it's going pretty good. You can see like right there, the bottom of the face is a little bit, I carved too deep on that side. It doesn't matter, okay? So at this point, I think you can see his hair where I cut the hair in. I didn't cut that in that good. Like that's more square than that side up top there, like the forehead. So I think I'll give this guy make long hair coming down the sides. I think at this point, um, let's see here. Maybe I'll try and carve some pupils in. I don't know how I'm going to film that because this wood spirit's going all right so far and I want it to keep going all right. And eyes can be a real game changer. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to stress out about not carving good eyes. I don't carve very good eyes. But the more that you do, the better you're going to get, just like anything else, right? So I, I, I could probably be pretty good at eyes right now, but I just don't practice them enough. If I practiced more, I think I would be a lot better. Okay, doing eyes uh, chainsaw carving is very hard because you got to be center. I should try my best to be center of the piece. So when I do eyes, I just kind of put a dot here and a dot there and try and make sure that they're equal. Now I got sorry, I got to look at it center. Now you kind of just draw your circle football thing on. There's so many different ways to do it. So I can already see that this one's higher, writing the eyebrow. It's okay. You know, and if you don't, if you're not, if you try to carve eyes and they don't look very good, just carve them out. Carve, make it hollow eyes. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is pull. I gotta stop saying KO. No, I know. Um, now what I'm gonna do is pull up my Dremel. And I'm going to carve on the outside of these lines pretty deep and then so Dremel carve on the outside of the lines remove some of this wood because you want this to look because you want this to look round the rounder that you can make this look the more real and better they're going to look I always have a problem with making them really round but today I'm going to really try my best and this part of the carving might even take half an hour so I'll step back, look and see if the eyes are okay. They look, they look okay to me. You know, look at everything. Everything looks all right to me. What do you think? Okay, so I'm gonna get the Dremel. Let me see if I I got the Dremel 4300 that I showed in the video with the cuts all burr here. This isn't the best burr to do eyes with. I'm gonna see if I got a different one. Well, I don't, so you're going to see me do the eye, shape it with this Cuts All Extreme Flame Burr. And um, I'm going to have to hold the camera off to the side. You might all, um, this is the part of the video where I might have to edit. Because I don't know if you're going to be able to see me carving this eye too. And i got to do my best to be straight onto the piece so I can equal them out. You know, so this 100% doing eyes is when you want to take your time like you don't believe. Also, I'm going to be, you're going to see me wearing a different dusk mask. My buddy Larry Dibbs on Vancouver Island gave me this one because my um, Air Shield Pro mask is not clean and I don't want to clean it. So you need to have good vision when you're doing the eyes too. So I'll be wearing this one. Always dust mask, so important.
Man, I hope this is filming. Yep. Okay, so I can see this eye is bigger than this one, but I'm going to try and round them out to be the same size. I don't care how deep I got to carve. I'll start with this one. Okay, so you can see you got to be it's easy to be fooled with shadows when you're doing eyes too So you can see the shadows here. So this eye is a little bit bigger than this one I can remove some more of this wood on this eyebrow open it up More if I want to but I think that's okay, and I'm fine with that So now this is a Dremel bit. Okay, this is a sorry I still got my mask on and it's kind of covering my mouth, but this is a Dremel 125 bit this burns the wood the same time as you're carving it. Uh, Ryan Cook introduced me to these. So now I'm going to carve the, uh, the top eyelid and the bottom eyelid lid in. And you got to remember the top eyelid on the side always comes over the bottom eyelid. Okay. I'm not the best person at showing how to carve eyes, but you know, I figured it should be kind of part of this video. My problem when I do eyes, I usually have the eyes too wide open. And you got to think like, um, I want this guy to kind of have like squinty eyes, like a kind of a wizard. So this is when you got to really take your time. You know, you can make it like a pointy up there, then kind of come down. Okay, so same thing with the dot here too. Make sure those are equal. My eyes, like I said, are never the most equal. Okay, so now with this burr, I'm going to go on. Not like Ryan says, Ryan taught me how to do eyes for an hour or two, so, but you don't cut, cut this in too deep. You cut here on the lines, and then you slowly remove the wood inside and make it round inside here too, okay?
So I don't re recommend pushing these butt, like having these burrs too far out. But I'm gonna pull this burr farther out because there's always that tricky area where it's hard to get to, you know? So you just gotta really take your time. Okay, I got the eyes carved in. I wish I had a flat diamond burr because I could really shape these, make them more round, but I think they're good, I think they're good enough. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use this burr and really burn up in here, give them some age lines. I'm gonna burn in here. I'm gonna I'm gonna burn under the bottom lip, burn deep down in here, burn around the nose, burn his uh, flare lines on his nose, and burn right here. I don't want to do too much burning because if I think you do too much burning it might start looking a bit cartoony. Okay, okay, so I did some extra burning. I learned that kind of stuff from uh, Sticks and Stones over there at Kevin. Uh, Kevin at Sticks and Stones, he's got a YouTube channel. Um, so I got this finger sander now. I don't run this at full speed because the belts keep falling off. That's what drives me nuts about this tool. But I'm gonna do the eyebrows. I'm gonna clean up the nose. I'm gonna clean up the bottom lip, maybe clean up some of these cheeks. I might even be able to get into those eyes and clean those up a bit.
Okay, so I can see this eye's opened up a little bit more than this eye. It's okay. It's quite all right. So now what I'm going to do, I think it's time to talk about the hairs. But first of all, like the, I'm going to, I got to draw that heart on. Anyways. Okay, I got the heart drawn on there. So that heart, I'm just going to, same thing, cut true to the lines and chip it out like a, like a wedge out. Okay, I'm not going to film doing that though. Ah, screw it, might as well film. So there's your heart. It's not perfect, it's a heart. Actually, I should make the things in there, thing things, a bit deeper. I'll do that off camera. Okay, so what I did with this heart, so I, because I want to run my beard hairs down, I did an undercut. I cut deep in there. So when you're looking at the piece straight on, you can extend your beard hairs behind the heart so it looks like it's sitting on top of the beard. So now let's, um, I'm going to have a break and we'll cut the beard hairs and the mustache hairs in. You can see here how I carved it down, so I blended it in with the beard. So, you know, I could even carve this down a bit lower too, right here, but I don't think I need to. See the depth inside here? Kind of makes your lip somewhat round. Carry on. So first of all, we'll focus on the beard hairs. Like I said, your 12 inch, steel bar will work okay when i do my beard hairs i don't cut straight in i use the side of the bar the side of the chain like this and i there's lots of different ways you can do the beard hairs you can do nice big smooth ones with a a smooth line you can do them real thin that's what the way i do i do them real thin and just separate them all and do crisscross so but all the time I'm using the beard hair, I'm gonna use the side of my bar. You guys will see me going like this, then you'll see me jump onto this side and going like this. And just and I gotta try and get inside here too, but I can always use my Dremel to get inside there after. So the side of the bar, okay? That's that's just the way I do it. 
but I also say before I fire up my chainsaw I try and keep everything rolling smooth the same direction all the cuts right so just off the mustache just do them nice and smooth I don't know how close up I'm gonna get of this and then the hair I decide I am gonna give this guy long hair but I might just fully just hit it hard I screwed up I didn't hit record but you guys can see what I mean just slice it in there get her done I kind of carved it like it was bark down there so I got to sound that better I got to burn it burn it inside the cut cuts there and I just kind of uh, made the top not so square okay so and it's just about cutting the carving the hair back deeper right pushing it back see the length you can do it any way you want to do it. That's just the way I did it. So it's kind of like the Jesus look. Yes. So now what I'm going to do, because I got all these, I got all these fluffies on here. Before I burn it, you see how thin that is? I like the beard hairs like that. Because when I burn it and sand it, all the brittle pieces will fall off. Before I burn it, I'm going to get my, uh, like I showed you guys, the nylon wheel here. And I'm going to clean it all up first, get rid of most of the fuzzies, then I'll burn it, then sand it. These extensions, Bob King sells them. Anyways, you can see how that works. If you uh, want to get into chainsaw carving, this is a great tool to have too. It's just a cheap die grinder, uh, just a regular grinder, sorry, with a 56 grit sanding pad on there with a backing pad. I'm just going to clean up the heart and below uh, there, but I, I'll just show you quickly.
but this is good to have too, an orbit sander. I'm just gonna clean up that heart a little bit more. Then we can start burning. I got no battery left, I got no time left. Okay, I've been known to burn too deep sometimes, but so where I'm gonna burn deep is in here, in here, in here, just slightly hit this. I'll burn up here deep, inside where it's deeper in here, around the heart and these cut marks here. And I'll just slightly hit this stuff, because this is beautiful cedar and you wanna see the wood. If you do too much burning, you just don't see the color of the wood. So carry on. So I see here I gotta fix that a bit. I just gotta do a couple cuts. I'll get that done, finish burning, and then I'll sand it. Lots of the times when you use those uh, those sand those sanding things for your thing, you get little fuzzies on here. You just get your torch and go over it quickly, and it will melt all the little string things that you got from those uh, sanding things. So that's it. One important thing: don't forget to sign your pieces. I don't know how much time I'm going to have left, but that's it, everybody. I hope it's been able to uh, help some of you new beginning chainsaw carvers. There's a carving fusion uh, wood spirit with a heart on it. Here's a just carved Rob side view. See, you can push those eyebrows back further if you want to get that nose to pop off more. It doesn't matter. Carry on, everybody. Carry on. Carving fusion over and out. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Let's see if there's enough room on my storage. So, there's the first carving I did. I kept at it. Then I did this carving. I think it's like, I think that's walnut. I'm not too sure, maple. Then I did that one. Then I did this one. When you're having a good time, just let her rip. Don't be intimidated by what anybody says. Have a good time. And well, you know, carry on. I like this one. I kind of went with like the uh, Steve Kanzora hair, but you can see these beard hairs 
are a lot bigger and those hair hairs are a lot bigger than those beard hairs so there's so many different ways you can do it just open up your mind and explore it's an all an experiment that's right okay bye